Alright, this will be the last time I film something while using Linux Mint. Um, so, for those who don't know, um, I've been using Linux since Vista. Um, I don't really consider, uh, you know, just booting up an operating system and doing a couple things as using a operating system. I, I, I get the confusion there. Uh, I'm just not really good at putting things into words sometimes. Um, so I have, uh, done, you know, I've gone to the library, and, uh, their laptops all run Windows 7 back when I was using them, uh, and did, like, a simple web browsing, uh, but I did, haven't really ever used Windows 7 as, like, a daily operating system, fully used it. Um, again, I don't consider using something for a task or two as using an operating system. I'm weird like that. Um, but when it comes to a daily driver, I really need to be able to use the operating system. And if there's something I can't do or something important that I'm trying to do that I can't figure out, I won't use it. I like things to be simple. And the past two or three years, I want to say three years, I've ran into some issues with Mint all of a sudden that I've never had before. Um, it started with a couple programs not working. They wouldn't boot. They were uh, just crashing and never opening. Um, that got fixed. And then there was an issue where updating my kernel uh, fucked something up, and I don't know why. Uh, I don't remember exact issue that that was happening there. Um, and now the issue is I can't update flat packs uh, because the problem is Cinnamon is a fork of GNOME 3, and the version it's using is too old. In fact, it's so old, it's dead. So it's just not supported anymore. And so, I can't update my flat packs. Um, and if that weren't bad enough, when I tried to unlock the bootloader of my Sony Xperia XA2 Plus, or whatever the fuck it's called, it's a 6-inch phone, um... I had to hit the command multiple times, and I mean at least 15 times. Uh, trying to install Sailfish was a nightmare. Um, I actually ended up installing Fedora on a spare drive on an extra laptop I had, and that ran no fucking problem. Um, literally 10 seconds uh, is all it took to install that. Um, it, it, it really is making me realize that anything based off Ubuntu... It is just complete fucking garbage. And it's no fault of Linux Mint, in my opinion. I feel like a lot of the problems are rising from Canonical. Um, with a lot of the shit they're doing. And, uh... I mean, I'm not really privy to how shit works. On the, I'm intermediate, if anything. I would know how to build a distro. Um, but a lot of the packages Linux Mint uses come from Ubuntu, so I'm placing the blame on Ubuntu. Um, when packages don't work. And, unfortunately for Linux Mint, it's a beautiful distro. It's very well done. But the fact that Cinnamon is using out-of-date version of GNOME is entirely their fucking fault. Um, and it is preventing me from updating flat packs. The fact that they have a Debian base... Uh, and don't make that the default, and instead of trying to keep the Ubuntu base, is entirely the Linux Mint dev's fucking fault. Um, and it's really uh, sad, because it is a great distro, or at least it was until three versions ago. Three or four versions ago, I want to say. Uh, when it's just one thing after another, and, you know... If a package I need to use isn't opening, I'm not going to wait until the next fucking release to use that package. Uh, if I can't install a, an operating system on my phone, and I have to install another version of Linux on another laptop, I'm not going to keep using your fucking operating system. And it really does suck, because I really like Cinnamon, I really like Mint, but it's completely unusable for me. And so I've been really struggling to find another distro because I don't want to use Fedora. And the reason why is because in order to use Fedora, you have to use RPM Spear, uh, Sphere, um, RPM Fusion, 
and uh, another third-party repository. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, in order to get all the packages. Because for whatever fucking reason, Fedora has a very tiny amount of packages compared to everyone else. And it's it's just fucking baffling. Um, and the problem with a lot of these third-party third party repositories, as some people on Reddit have pointed out to me, they're not really uh, verified. They might contain malware. And I understand that. But at the end of the day, I need these fucking packages. And I have no other alternative because Fedora sucks. Um, and I really hate that Fedora does that and forces me to use a third-party party re third party repository just to get the packages I need because they can't bundle it in their stupid fucking operating system. And that's really my biggest issue with Fedora is their package uh, repository it is just fucking dog shit. It, it, a lot... Uh, I want to say at least 15 to 20 percent of the packages I use are not available on Fedora, and I have to go to third-party repositories for it. So what I've been looking at, um, if I open GNOME boxes here, is OpenSUSE. If this will go, um, OpenSUSE is RPM based, like Fedora. Um, it is based on the latest stable version of everything, like Fedora. But unlike Fedora, it has all the fucking packages I need. Um, which is great. Uh, I don't have to do any trickery to install uh, papyrus folders. It's included in the repository. Everything works. Um, but the main thing, and the main problem, and I've had this issue for a while, is KDE's always been fucking terrible for me. Uh, because I've never been able to theme it properly. And that's really started to change in the past couple versions of KDE. I really like some of the design changes they've made. And as you can see here, I've managed to actually theme this properly. Um... So, to go over the theme, I have Dracula, because of course I fucking do. Uh, it's a nice dark theme. Um, colors. Uh, and then for icons, I have, of course, Pyrus Dark. Um, but at the end of the day, this is usable for me. For Windows decorations, I have Koger. I had no idea how the fuck to pronounce that. A U is supposed to come after the Q. Um, that's not English, and I have no idea how the fuck to pronounce it. But it is great. I have the classic Mac set up for this. Um, everything's working properly. But as you can notice, there is one fucking problem that I've always had with KDE. As you can see, my cursor here is DMZ White. And it just did it. See how it's not... See see, see if I go here, it's uh, the default Breeze. And if I go over here, it's Breeze. And now it's back to DMZ. And now it's not DMZ. It, th this is a fucking joke. And I have no idea how the fuck to fix it. And it's always been an issue with KDE. Uh, with the exception of maybe one or two ver distros that have KDE, and I have no idea how the fuck to fix this. It is on almost every fucking KDE version I've ever used, with the exception of maybe one or two, and I don't know what the fuck they did to get around it, but this is fucking stupid. If I change the cursor, it should change the cursor, not change the cursor sometimes. That is the only fucking issue I'm having with KDE. And I really hope they fix it or something. Uh, the only other issue besides the cursor, actually, is this stupid fucking thing. So if we can... F uh, if we go to units here. Pressure should be PSI. I'm an American. We use PSI. There is no PSI here. Every other weather app I've ever used for GNOME or anything else has PSI. Uh, so I have to message the developer of this fucking app, or widget or whatever, 
to see if he can't add PSI as pressure because I don't know what any of this shit is. I don't use any of this shit. Again, in America, we use PSI. We don't use any of this shit. Uh, none of this shit makes any sense. I couldn't tell you what the fuck any of this is. Uh, it's funny, though, because they have the miles and miles per hour in Fahrenheit. That's great, but the pressure, I have no idea what any of that shit is. Um, so those two things are the only issue with KDE, and it is minuscule enough where I'm going to be using KDE uh, going forward. Um, I don't like using GNOME. I would like to use XFCE, but it is a little too outdated, even though it is my second favorite GUI. Um... My main problem with XFCE is on OpenSUSE, for whatever fucking reason, if I were, as you can see, the fucking cursor problem is still here, um, the only GUI I can find that you can do this with is KDE, and that is to open this as root. I understand it's not secure. I, I, I don't care. Um, it's very easy for me to copy and paste shit doing this, as opposed to using the move command in a terminal. Um, so, going forward, um, I'm going to switch to OpenSUSE, and I'm going to be using KDE as my desktop environment. Um, I feel like that's a good fit for me. I just really hope they fix the two minor issues uh, sometime. I am going to message the developer of uh, the weather app, so hopefully he can fix that fucking thing uh, at some point. Uh, but I really need to figure out how to fix this cursor issue because it's is bugging me the fuck out. Um, it, it really looks stupid. Um, I mean, I don't know what the fuck to do, honestly. I could just use Breeze as a default cursor, but I don't like the cursors Breeze comes with. Uh, it's just me. I just don't like them. Um... Not that they're terrible, it's just... I, I just don't like the cursor. Um, other than that, Linux is a great operating system. It's just... For whatever reason, uh, the past few years, more and more shit has been going wrong with Linux Mint. And it's funny because some of it is on Linux Mint as a project, but a lot of it is probably on Ubuntu as well. Um, so it's really hard to pinpoint where the problem's coming from. Uh, obviously, Linux Mint makes the Cinnamon Desktop, so it is on them that the version of GNOME is no longer supported. Um, but as to why uh, Flash Boot wasn't working, I couldn't fucking tell you. Um, it, it's just one of those fucking problems that I shouldn't be having. Um, but what's really funny, and we're going to talk about NVIDIA now, is I've always stated that NVIDIA is a fucking terrible uh, company when it comes to Linux because of the fact that it is very difficult to get working in Linux. E even if you do install the proprietary drivers, the minute you update your kernel, something could break, and that has happened before. Uh, do your own research. Um, there are forums discussing it, but yeah, people have literally updated their kernel and the kernel broke something because of the NVIDIA driver. So, and this is probably going to be probably a couple years, honestly. But it would be nice for NVIDIA to have uh, their drivers open sourced and in the kernel. Uh, I believe Intel is doing the same thing uh, because... Then I could literally just buy any laptop and not have to worry about uh, if it has NVIDIA. As I've stated before, for a lot of f stupid fucking reasons, uh, and they're still doing this, by the way, there's a very clear bias towards Intel and NVIDIA when it comes to laptops and desktops. Uh, more so on laptops where you can only get certain features with NVIDIA, like 4K screens, um, 
That is starting to change a little bit, but for the most part, if you want a 4K screen, you have to go NVIDIA. Um, there was a case five years ago or six years ago now where I went on Dell and there were two identical laptops, but if you wanted a backlit keyboard, you could only get the backlit keyboard with the Intel chip. Um, it's stupid shit like that that makes me really hate the fucking laptop market. And it's not that I hate NVIDIA as a graphic card. They make great workstation cards. Uh, if you need a, a workstation card, um, I would definitely recommend NVIDIA. For gaming or just basically anything, I wouldn't recommend them. Uh, simply because... Bang for your buck, AMD is going to give you similar enough results where it's not worth the extra money to go with NVIDIA. And at the same time, I, I mean, they draw less power now. Uh, that's been back and forth, but uh, for the most part, uh, especially this uh, this uh, generation, it, it looks like AMD does draw less power than the, the NVIDIA parts because of the RAM NVIDIA is using. Um... But also, because NVIDIA does stupid shit, like, hey, we released a new graphics card. Oh no, we're not top dog. Let's re-release a new graphics card, but call it the Super. Uh, basically fucking over everyone who just bought our graphics cards, because now we've made something better. It, it, it's stupid shit like that that NVIDIA does that really pisses me off, and why I don't recommend them. Um... So, no, I'm not just going to switch to NVIDIA because they've open-sourced their drivers, but it is great for people who need a workstation because Quadros are, without a doubt, the best workstation cards. Um, AMD does make some workstation cards, but they're really not as good as the Quadros. And it's really a shame that AMD's never been able to make a proper workstation card that really does as well as a Quadro. Um, it, it really does suck, because right now, the only option for graphics, if you have Linux, is really AMD, because NVIDIA will break your kernel eventually. Um, there are a lot of problems that come with running NVIDIA on a Linux system. And I'm glad that's changing. Um, but it's not going to change anytime soon, honestly, uh, for the m mainstream people. Um, what I would like to see, though, is how SLI works on Linux, because it's no longer supported on, uh, on Windows at, at all. Most games don't even support it. But on Linux, if you can get SLI working, I would really like to see how that works with, uh, video editing, because that would be really interesting to see. Uh, you know, video editing workstation with two 3090s or some shit uh, running Linux. I would really like to see the performance of that. Unfortunately, I'm too broke to afford that kind of system. But it would be an interesting thing to see. Um, I'm sure you could do that right now. Uh, I, honestly, I don't know. I don't use NVIDIA. But the problem is, again, the kernel might break. Uh, because the proprietary drivers now break kernels. So that's pretty much this video. Um, it, it really is good to see more competition in the graphics space, honestly. I'm really looking forward to seeing how Intel's uh, graphics work out, especially on Linux, because that's what I use. Um, but more competition is always better. And I'm hoping NVIDIA doesn't fuck this up. And they actually do right by the open source community. Um, OpenSUSE, coincidentally, is one of the ones that's going to be testing the NVIDIA open source kernels first. Them and Canonical. Uh, Canonical can go fuck themselves. Uh, they've made some really shit decisions. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, their fucking uh, store they're using with the Snap packages, uh, the Snap store proprietary software, it's not even open source, and snaps suck, I'm sorry, but like, even on this Ryzen laptop, and I've tested this, 
snaps still take longer than 10 seconds to open, and it's just fucking terrible. I would rather use flat packs. Flat packs already exist, and one thing I can't fucking stand right now, and I understand why, because this is Linux and this is what we do, we make like a thousand versions of shit that does the same thing. Um, that's an exaggeration, but you get my point. We have, like, numerous distros. We have, uh, numerous packages that all do the same thing. Uh, there's a Microsoft Paint knockoff for KDE, uh, and GNOME. Two different programs do the same exact thing. Uh, and there's a few other examples of shit like that. Uh... So we have flat packs, we have snaps, we have, uh, I forget the other thing that runs on like Java or some stupid shit. Um, and it would really be nice to just have one thing like flat pack that just works on everything that everyone endorses. Uh, and, and I hope going forward that happens, but I'm not holding my breath. Uh, so anyways, that's this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Um, if anyone watching this knows how to fix this stupid problem I'm having with this cursor, uh, that would be much appreciated, um, because it's really dumb, and I will see you guys in the next video.